Hi, I'm Catherine Costello, a licensed clinical social worker, and we're here this evening to discuss stress management during April, which is our Stress Management Awareness Month. I appreciate you joining us. We're going to review today what is stress, how do we mitigate stress, how do we identify stress, and um, what are some solutions we can put into place for us and resources for managing stress. So um, this is a part of the Safe Project Veterans Group. And um, we will be putting on a webinar once a month. So we hope you continue to join us and we will highlight various topics that will be relevant to mental health and um, being able to provide some resources for you. So what is stress? Stress is a response that is a normal response to demands and changes of life. And this can be both positive and negative. And it's hard for us to think about positive things be in our life being stressful, but in reality they are. Having a new baby, buying a new car, getting a new home, starting a new job, all of those things can be just stressful. There's things in our life that may be considered a negative stress, such as losing a job, um, getting a divorce, um, or even just day-to-day -day stressors that we might go through with navigating day-to-day -day life. Um, anything that can be a change. So, Normally you have what we call as a homeostasis in our life or a balance of what our day-to-day -day life looks like or what we anticipate. And then when that homeostasis or balance gets tilted, we will have a positive or negative change um, with our stress levels. And this response uh, to stress is as individual as each individual is. So how you react to stress, what is a stressful situation to you and what impacts you with stress and is really truly individual to each person. It is physiological. We know that there are physiological changes that happen within our body when we get stressed and it has a long-term impact and it can have a very negative impact on our health. We also know that some level of stress is necessary for survival. So we do have um, stress for a reason. And we know that stress has been able to um, keep us motivated or has protected us and allowed us to move through life when we need to have those advanced um, stressors that will put us into motion. Stress can become problematic when it's habitual or we have chronic stresses. So while some level of stress can be healthy to keep us motivated, ongoing stress can have a negative impact. This includes on our emotional, mental and physical well-being, as well as impacts us behaviorally. And what are our physical signs and symptoms of stress? So almost all of us in life, or all of us at this point in our lives, have experienced stress at some point. And we know that there may be physical symptoms that will make us aware that we're dealing with stress before we even have any other symptoms, um, or that we even pay attention or are mindful to the stressful situations are happening for us. This can be headaches, muscle tension, shortness of breath, um, fatigue, changes in appetite, changes in sleep patterns where maybe you aren't able to sleep or you're sleeping too much, and then digestive and stomach issues. These are all very common physical symptoms that happen to our body when, again, we're managing stressors. And then our biological changes happen in our body with the cortisone um, that impacts our physical being. Some of the mental signs and symptoms um, are trouble thinking clearly, poor concentration, confusion, negative self-talk, forgetfulness, and poor judgment. So if you think about times in your life when you've had some significant stress, it's not uncommon for us to really have that fog of stress where we're doing things, we're making more mistakes at work, we lose our car keys, we forget things, um, our judgment's off, uh, and a lot of times with stress, we have the negative self-talk that goes around it, where we aren't really being our own best friend. We're not really being compassionate to ourselves. We're actually being harder on ourselves as a result of the stress. Some of our emotional symptoms and signs that can come are feeling out of control, the nervousness and anxiety. Anxiety is very common around stress. Sadness, hopelessness, and depression are all very common around stress as well feelings of worthlessness and increased anger. So if you are noticing any of these emotional signs, um, this almost may also be a sign that you're experiencing prolonged stress or that you're, you have, you're having stressors in your life. Um, and anxiety and depression are very common 
emotional um, signs and symptoms that go around stress, as is anger. So it also impacts us behaviorally. Uh, we may become more aggressive. A lot of people will turn to substance use to be able to deal or manage with stress or to kind of numb the stress or not have to deal with the stress. So they look at it as a way of a coping mechanism. You may have challenges starting or completing projects or um, some other issues that we may see are compulsive gambling, um, sex addictions, or compulsion with internet use. The sources of stress that are out there are uncontrollable or unpredictable events, and this could be excessive workloads, conflicting expectations, environmental conditions that are stressful for us, internal or external um, sources that um, are causing us stress, relationships, health, finance, and threats, either perceived or real to our safety. There are also various levels of stress. So there's basic normal response to everyday regular demands of daily living that we have when it comes to stress that we will, um, you know, just basic changes in our life and our schedule, um, stuck in traffic, um, you know, water main break, something happens that, um, you know, that causes you basic everyday stress that you weren't anticipating that can become a larger stress if it's prolonged. And then that becomes distress, um, which is intense demands that exceed the normal routine of daily living. So um, where you may have your basic stressors, they become distressed then when they are prolonged um, and they're more intense. And then long-term burnout, and where it really gets dangerous for us with stress levels is when we have ex excessive exposure to distress. So we're not going back to that, you're stuck in traffic, you're out of traffic, that stressor is gone. Um, you come back down to your normal balance. Um, it's prolonged and it's staying with us. And this is where we can really see physical and mental health implications of stress. We can also have anticipatory stress. So if you are caused to have a concern over something that might happen in the future, um, or you perceive it might happen, and you can, this can be causing you stress, um, thinking about the future um, or anticipating something that, you know, that you have might have an assignment due and you're anticipating that you might miss a deadline because everything else going on in your life or you anticipate um, you know, that something is going to happen. This causes you stress. Chronic enduring situations such as an illness, strained personal relationships or different difficult working relationships. We know that relationships and are have an Im big impact on stress. Um, we also know that if you have an illness, it's a physical, physical and mental go hand in hand and that um, ongoing illness or difficult situations can have an impact and cause chronic stress. Situational are immediate threats or challenges that demand our attention right now. And these could be perceived threats to our safety, um, an, an immediate threat to our well being, or an immediate threat in a situation we're in. And so once that situation subsides, the immediate threat may no longer be there. And so then the stress may subside. But then we have residual and ongoing, which is post-traumatic events, which continue to affect um, our present levels of stress. And so you may experience an event, uh, but then that trauma stays with you. And so that event um, day after day continues to impact your stress level. We have different types of stress around traumatic loss and traumatic loss and grief experiences. So a traumatic loss could be a sudden loss of a pet, of a loved one, of a job. Um, and this is a stress, it's, it's an um, unexpected traumatic event um, or loss that happens to you. And traumatic experiences are the traumatic events that happen to you where you have an experience um, that is traumatic um, and then the ongoing stress stays with you. So the good news about stress is that even though we all have it and it impacts all of our daily lives, um, we do all have individual coping techniques uh, and individual ways that we've learned to cope. Um, so we obviously want to always focus on the positive ways of coping because we do know there are negative ways of coping and managing stress out there. Uh, but also part of this is to have awareness of identifying what stress is, identifying what it looks like for you, your signs and symptoms, and then looking at what strategies you as an individual have or that work for you that help mitigate your stress. So 
One thing we know that really helps with stress is changing your destructive thought pattern. So there is cognitive behavioral therapy out there or cognitive behavioral apps. There's a lot of cognitive behavioral worksheets out there, um, but our thoughts and perceptions of events directly impact our emotional and behavioral responses. So being aware and being able to identify a thought um, that is destructive to you that is also increasing or holding you in a stressful place. We do have control to learn to change our destructive thought processes, and this can reduce our stress levels. So being able to be mindful of what thought you're having and knowing that you do have the power to learn to, to change the destructive thought patterns. So how do we change this perception? Well, part of cognitive behavioral therapy, some of the cognitive apps out there and, and cognitive process changes of our thoughts is reframing our failures as new opportunities. So um, there's a lot of talk out there about positive talk, you know, um, toxicity and how you can be too positive when we need to identify and own um, our stressors or what our challenges are. And I don't think that reframing um, failures or opportunities um, or even looking at things from a gratitude perspective needs to um, not hold space or have compassion for those stressors we're having. We can do that, but also we can find ways to change our perception. One thing that really holds us in negative places is the coulda, shoulda, what ifs. And uh, if we're doing that, then we are looking at the past or we're looking at things that we um, are beyond our control to change. And knowing that we are making the best decisions with we can with what we have at hand at the time, knowing that those decisions we made, if we got new information, we made it would have made different um, decisions. You know, we can look at these ways of reframing our thoughts and changing our perception. Some things that can be really challenging are all or nothing, are all or nothing thinking, catastrophic thinking. Again, um, we might be going through a stressful situation, but the way we're perceiving and thinking about it can hold us in a negative spot. I always say be as compassionate with yourself as you would be with your friend or your family or someone that you care about when you're going through a stressful situation. We do have the, um, we are hard on ourselves or the hardest on ourselves sometimes versus having that compassion for ourselves. And focus on the present. You know, as much as you can, let go of the past. Like I said, if you're looking at the shit, it could have what sits as you're looking in the rear view mirror, then you're looking at things that are behind you that maybe, yes, you would change. Um, because now you have different information um, or you're in a different circumstance, but the, they're gonna hold you in a negative place. So let go of the past. And um, again, embrace optimism, gratitude. They have shown that having gratitude, um, people who write down three things a day of what they're grateful for, or even one thing a day, that it's literally changed the neural pathways in your brain if you focus daily on um, something that brings you gratitude. Take personal inventory. So part of this webinar is to help you become more aware of, again, what is stress? What does stress look like? How does it impact it? Um, and then really being able to take this to an individual level for you. So what are your own personal signs and symptoms of stress? Uh, is it something physiological? Is it that you lose concentration um, and you're forgetful? Is it that you're quick to anger? Um, do you eat? more um, and reach for food because you are feeling more stressed? Do you not eat at all? Um, are you, you know, more likely to become anxious because you're stressed? Um, or do you hold tension in your shoulders and you find that you all of a sudden have extreme headaches because of the tension? Really? So know what your signs and your symptoms are. And then what are your primary resources or sources of your stress? So this really is looking at like, what is, what is causing me stress? Um, and sometimes you may not know, but um, if you can take inventory of what's causing you stress, gosh, I have, you know, I have got to drop the baby off at daycare. Um, I've got a big presentation in the morning. I'm taking a class and I got a deadline due. Um, I got a big dinner. I got to prepare this weekend, you know, so take inventory of what it is that's, that's your stress. And then what are your thoughts around these? Um, you know, what are those distortions that you're having or any thoughts that you're having around um, the different stressors that you're having? Then what meaning do you give to these issues? Uh, and then what is actually in my control? What do I have control over um, within my stressors? And um, 
then looking at what is my plan of action? So I think a lot of times something that can be stressful for us is feeling out of control, especially when our balance is throwing off. So looking at what we do have control over. Um, you know, how, if you're stressed out about a situation, give yourself some action steps. If your actions, um, you know, or if you're not sure of actions, start small and it doesn't have to be something big, but um, having taking action sometimes can really help us move forward in our stress. Don't be afraid to seek help if your stress symptoms continue to persist and you feel as though you are not um, moving past your, your stressors. Asking for help is a sign of strength and it does take um, strength and courage to be vulnerable and say, um, I am struggling with this and I need help. And know you're resilient. Um, you've been through stress before, you've overcome stress before and you can do it again. And what's worked for you? Um, what, what have you used before that's worked? You know, exercise is a great stress reducer. And a lot of times when we're stressed and we have 10,000 things going on, um, the first thing we do is, you know, throw ourselves into it or we throw exercise out the window and um, we don't take time for ourselves. So taking time to exercise, even if it's going for a walk, can really make a difference. Eat right and limit alcohol take intake. It's another thing we... Um, we go to food and alcohol um, and other substances to try to manage the stress and really they only can add us to more stressors or more, more physiological challenges. So be mindful of that. You know, this again is about choosing healthy habits to help you mitigate your stress. Um, you know, stay in the present. There's several apps out there that I really like. There's the Breathe to Relax app. There's, um, and a lot of these are um, VA or DOD, Department of Defense apps, so you can get them. Um, there's a mindful, mindfulness coach cap app that there's a couple of them that Veteran Affairs has. Breathe to Relax is a great app um, to help you focus on your breath. Um, and we know that focusing on your breath can increase oxygen. Um, it actually um, helps calm you down. It trains you um, to focus on your breathing and switch and be mindful when you're in a stress, in a stressful situation. And these will actually physically then help reduce, reduce the cortisol levels as well as um, physically help your body relax. So um, the Defense Health Agency puts out the Breathe to Relax app and it is an excellent resource. There's also a couple other ones out there that Veteran Affairs has and um, they have a whole webpage for apps. So we're always happy to share those with you. Um, the Annie app veterans group is for automated, automated text messages, um, and they help you take charge of your help, including reducing your stress levels. Um, the vet change app is an app that is out there that is around substance use and, and um, cutting down on drinking or um, other um, habits that you may have around stress and helping you manage stress and guide you through a professional treatment if you need help to find a professional treatment. Um, there's a PTSD coach out there that helps if you have had a traumatic experience and you're having prolonged um, stress that is also excellent for you. And these are all available at myhealth.va.gov um, under the mobile apps. So these are some excellent resources. Meditation is a great way. Um, the Calm app offers some um, re reduced fees for military veterans and first responders. And then Insight Timer is a free app that is available out there for anybody who wants to use it, um, who um, can use, and they have some great meditation techniques on that app. Some other things we can do for ourselves to manage stress is maintain strong social support systems and connections. Um, and we know that laughter is an excellent way to mitigate stress. So if you're able to get together with friends and laugh, um, then it is an excellent way through social supports and connections or watch a funny movie. Um, you know, do something that can um, maybe simplify at least for a moment your life. Um, you know, say no, say no to social commitments that are putting you over the limit and that maybe are too much for you um, and that are um, going to be a negative impact on your life and know where, where to say no. Um, but be okay with, um, you know, um, going ahead and connecting with people where it is positive for you so you can get that, um, you know, get that social connection. Share your thoughts and reach out when you feel overwhelmed. There's lots of veteran groups out there um, for families as well. Um, there's lots of peer groups out there. Uh, 
And, you know, also be willing to share with your family or friends. Um, engaging in social activities, you know, getting outdoors, um, engaging in activities that are again positive activities for us, um, hiking, biking, um, you know, different things that can get you out in nature are also very helpful to managing stress. And again, um, know your resources. This can be hard because there's a lot of resources out there, but then also it can be challenging um, when you can't connect with a resource and it's easy to just give up on it. But, you know, part of it is knowing your resources before you get to the point where you can't um, reach out for help because you're feeling so overwhelmed. So seek those out um, and have those in your back pocket and look at things that have worked for you in the past. So there are lots of resources out there um, that are available and finding the one that is the right fit for you. So in summary, um, stress is as unique and as individual as each and every one of you are and how you deal with stress is as unique and as individual as every one of you. Um, because um, how, how we process stress, one thing is stressful for you is not stressful for another person. And um, what has worked for you to mitigate stress may not work for another person. So know your own individual signs and symptoms of stress. Um, overload, including um, behavioral health, um, you know, emotional health, physical health, and mental health. Learn coping strategies that can help you reduce and if you are having ongoing symptoms, make sure that you reach out and seek help um, outside um, with a prof trained professional to be able to get help. Um, and there's an, one other resource that um, I did not mention under our resilience resources, which is the box breathing. It's another resource that's excellent to uh, give you some time to be mindful and focus on your breathing. So uh, what, we hope that you enjoyed the presentation today. A few takeaways for you are, you know, mind, body are one, stress impacts both our physical and mental health, um, that stressors happen to all of us and that it can be in our day-to-day -day life or it can be as a, from a traumatic incident, um, that prolonged stress has a negative impact on our bodies and minds. Um, and part of our ability to mitigate stress is to have mindfulness and self-awareness by taking inventory, um, what our stressors are, uh, how we deal with stress and what resources we have. And if you do need any additional information from us, please feel free to reach out anytime. We're happy to help you. We're here to help connect you to resources that are available. And we hope you will join us again on a future webinar.